Audacious Church. Welcome to church. Yes, absolutely. So great to have you with us. Yes. My name's Paul. This is Zoe. Yes. We are your campus pastors here in Audacious Church in Manchester. If yes. you didn't know, we have campuses in five different cities. Uh, they are Sheffield, Cardiff, Geneva, Geneva, Chester, Chester. And Manchester. And here in Manchester, we have three locations, yes. Central, North and South. And then we've got all you beautiful people as well. Yes. And it's going to be an amazing day in God's house. Yes, it is. We're starting a new series. Yep. We've got Pastor Glynn bringing Pastor Glynn. an amazing word. And the series, is it God's questions? No, big questions. Big questions. Have you got big questions? Have you got big questions? Not God's questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have so you got big questions? Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at some big questions. Why does bad stuff happen to good people? Why only Jesus? And then also, uh, what happens when I die? Well, listen... You guys are watching online or you're listening somewhere now. 
This is your personal invitation if you're in Manchester to come back tonight for yes, our 5.30 service. Yes, we'd love service. to see you in person. Because we're going to pray off the back of Pastor Glynn's message from this morning. So if yes. God speaks to you and you're able to, why don't you come and join us yeah. tonight? For now, though, so let's you. have a great Enjoy service. Enjoy the service. Get up on your feet. Get ready to praise and worship. Yeah. See you guys.
you are faithful. We give you praise. We give you all the glory, God. You are good. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, isn't it good to praise together this morning? In Romans 12, it says, in hope, rejoice. In trial, be patient and pray in everything. And it's at this moment in our services that we encourage you to go to our prayer walls. And it's because we believe in the power of prayer. We know that God is a faithful God, that He hears your prayers, that He knows your cries, that He's with you in the joy and in the celebration. So why don't you just lift your hands? We're going to praise, we're going to continue worshipping Him, because He is good. Oh, you're good, you're good. good. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we love you. Oh, Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Oh 
one more time, every hand raised. No, my life, you have been Come on, he's a faithful God. He'll never forsake you. No, my life, you have been so, so good. Come on, the goodness of God is with you. With every breath that I am in, oh, I will sing. Come 
on, every hand raised in this place, I wanna pray over you right now. I don't know what you've walked in here with this morning. I don't know how you feel today. I don't know what your week has looked like, but what I do know is that our God is a good God. He's a faithful God, that He'll never leave you. He'll never abandon you, that when you walk through the valley, He's there every step of the way. So lift your hands right now, whether you've had a good week, a bad week or an in-between week. Father God, right now, we magnify Your Name. We lift it up, Name above all names. God, we thank You that You are good, that You work for good on our behalf, that You are faithful, that You always keep Your Word, that You are always true to Your name and nature. God, right now, in the midst of the valley, in the midst of the battle, we choose to magnify and glorify and lift up the name above every name. King Jesus, You are worthy of all praise. And everyone with faith said, come on right now, just for 10 seconds, would You put praise on Your lips? Come on, would you lift up the name above all names, the God who is good, who is faithful, who is worthy of all praise. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're gonna continue with our worship right now by taking our tithes and our offerings. If you're at the front, you can head back to your seat. And if you're already at your seat, you can grab one of these envelopes for me, take your seat and just pick one of these up and Just wave it around just so I can see you've got it when you've got it. Just give it a nice wave in the air. Some people using it to fan themselves. I know it's warm in the house, it's okay. And you can start to fill this out. You've got a QR code on there. You've got a QR code on screen. You can scan that if you wanna give digitally today. But as you're doing that, my good friend Alex has joined me on stage, part of our incredible youth team here in Manchester. And uh, I've just asked Alex just to inspire us, encourage us as we come around this time of worship and giving. Great, well, yeah, it's amazing to speak to you this morning, church. Uh, What an incredible Sunday it's been so far, just the presence of God, so clear and evident in the room. And when I was asked to kind of share about the offering, I felt the Lord kind of take me back to the Scriptures in Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 31, verses 6 to 8. It says this, Moses speaking to Joshua, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord Himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. And it got me thinking that in life there are always things that lie ahead of us that affect the way we interact with our today. What lies ahead can often make us think differently and act differently in the day that we find ourselves in. Like I'm getting married in August, right? Yeah. uh, uh, (laughs) Pray for Rachel. Uh, uh, and they, there are so many things that we have to think about, like where we're going to live, how we're going to pay the bills, uh, you know, how we're going to put fuel in the car, all these different kind of things kind of rage through the mind and so many different questions and things that we're going to need God to provide for. Uh, and logic would say that because all of this stuff lies before me, I should be really careful and hold so tightly what I have right now. Because what's ahead of me is there's need there, there's actual need, there's things that we need God for. Maybe we shouldn't tithe this month. Maybe I shouldn't give this month because the car's going in for MOT and we don't know how that's going to go. Logic might say one thing, but I'm thanking God that I don't have to follow logic. That we don't have to be a people of logic this morning. We can be a people of faith. And when we become focused on what is ahead of us, we lose our ability to be generous in the now. No matter what is before me, I can be the generous person God has called me to be. Not because I'm in tomorrow, because that verse tells us He's already gone before. That verse tells me that He's already gone before me and He's gone before you. So whatever situation faces you today, Audacious Church, be encouraged that the God of heaven and earth has gone before you so you can be who He's called you to be today. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. You don't have to worry about next week. Obviously pray about it. But God's gone before you. He's already made a way. So when we come around our tithes, our offerings this morning, let's be a people of faith. Let's be people who go, yes, there's challenge. Yes, there's need. Yes, there's things we need God to provide for. But let's put the first things first. Let's trust in who He, who he is today and who He's called us to be today. Let's do that, hey? So good. Hey, do me a favour, just... Hold your offering in your hand. We wanna pray over this moment. Just hold it tight. If you give digitally, you can hold your phone in this moment. And just bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, right now, we give you this offering, God. We thank you. 
that you have already gone before us, that you've already made a way, that we can trust that you are our provider. God, right now, I pray, would you bless this offering? Would you bless every single person in our service today? And everybody said, amen. So good, the buckets are gonna come down. You can put your offering in there. And I'm giving over to Paul and Zoe. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are we doing, Audacious Church? So good to see you all. We measure how well you're doing by the level of woo. <laughs> no. A lot of woos it's a over bit this better. side. Let's check out this side over here. How are you guys doing? Yeah, a few men over there. Woo. It's quite deep. Woo. You sound like ghosts. Boo. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, we're just so glad that you chose to be a part of Audacious Church today. Our job is to give you a great big welcome. Look at the person next to you and say, do you feel welcomed? Okay, if the person said yes, give me a wave. Okay, about 50% feel welcomed. I think that's, that's not a bad start. No, that's a good start. Now this is Paul Hi. and my name is Zoe and we're some of the pastors here at Audacious Church. Yes, we are. And as Paul said, we want to welcome you all, but we want to give a really special welcome to anyone who is here for the very first time. We have a little gift for you. So if it is your first time, if you put your hand up, one of our hosts will get one of these orange bags to you as quickly as they can. All right, put them up Good nice and see. high. Right at the back Keep of Keep it up until we get to you. Now listen, if you're watching online, then we want to know about you as well. So uh, maybe you could click the link in the chat and that will take you through to our uh, page where you can give us your details and we can get to know a bit about you as well. Come on, keep Come it up nice in. and high. Come on team, we've got people over here. Oh, Keep it up, keep it up. Right down the middle in the... Right down the back in the one middle is what I'm here. trying to say. Wow, lots of hands, so many hands. Okay, okay, just let's just chill. Keep your hands up, they're, they're still coming to you, okay? Just keep it up nice and high. Right down the back there. I wouldn't right. take you a bag myself. This bag is your invitation to our Connections Lounge. So at the end of the service, if you go through the double doors on my right and turn right, there's the Connections Lounge and we would love to meet you there. There's a cup in here so you can come and get it filled with tea or coffee and we'd love to meet you and get to know you. Yes, so that's for you at the end of the service, okay? We'll remind you when we close the service and me and Zoe will be in there and we'll meet you along with the team and we'll give you a brew and all that stuff. Now listen, if you are new to our church, obviously if you just received a bag, you're our first time guest today, but maybe you've been coming for a few weeks and you may have received an email inviting you to our course called Home, Audacious Home. And this is a course for anybody that wants to make Audacious Church their home church. And uh, we can, you can get to know us a little bit, who we are, why we do what we do and all of that. And that's happening in this service. And so in just a moment, this great big sign is gonna be carried by Pastor Darren. You all right, mate, just fin you know, finish your conversation, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, you finished it, okay, good. All right, so when we go to ATV, which is in just a moment, Darren is gonna walk down this aisle. You can stand there and look beautiful for the next minute or so. And then um, that's your invitation. If you just receive your orange bag today and you like the sound of that, then you can go too. Um, oh, we wanna give you a standing yes, ovation. Yes, we do. Yes, go ahead, you know what you're doing. So, we, if it's your first time, we wanna give you your very own standing ovation because you're so, we're so glad that you're here. So, come on, Audacious Church, let's stand. On your feet! And welcome our new people. All right, now turn it up to 11. That is especially for you. You can now take your seats. That was especially for you if you're a first time guest. And uh, there's all sorts of stuff that goes on at Audacious Church. If you're new, you probably want to know about it. If you've been here for centuries, you still probably want a little bit of a reminder. So we've got something called ATV. It stands for Audacious Television and here it is. TV from wherever you may be watching from. Whether you're in Manchester Central, North or South. 
Cardiff, Sheffield, Geneva, and Chester. Chester. And a special welcome if you're watching this online or on YouTube. Hello. Great to see you. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. My name's Lynn Marie. And this I'm is Joel. Joel. And we've got a lot to tell you about. This is A T V. <laughs> Holy Savior, Jesus. What? He's alive! He's alive. What's it all about? Traditions will you keep? How much chocolate will you eat? Are there any other treats? What's it all about? What is the story? I bet it's boring. But what if there's another explanation? Somebody help me. It's overwhelming. You can't ignore this sort of desperation. What's it all about? got new audacious college lectures which we would love for you to join us and be part of we are studying the books of the new testament and we've got brand new lectures it's going to be amazing so you can join us in person or online wherever you may be just head to audaciouscollege.com and sign up hey you have been watching atv have a great sunday we'll see you next week Bye bye Fantastic. How good was Easter weekend, last weekend? All right, now we're using the medium of a round of applause to measure your enthusiasm. How good was it? I think it would be fitting for us to just stand to our feet and thank all of the team, all of the people that helped with the big give on Friday, our schools tour that led up to Easter weekend, all of the actors, dancers, singers, production, people in the car park. We want to say thank you so much for a brilliant, brilliant Easter weekend. And we want to say thank you to Jesus, the King of Kings, for everything that He's doing in Audacious Church and through our church in this city. All right, you can take your seats. Listen, if you want to be involved in any of these projects that we do, we, uh, we will literally snap your hand off. Don't be looking at the platform or around the place thinking everything's covered. It is not. We're like a swan. Mint on top, pedaling like crazy. Pedaling? They don't pedal, do they? Ever seen a swan riding a bike? No. Paddle! Paddling underneath. Brilliant! Now, listen, you've joined us today on this, uh, the first Sunday of a brand new series. It's called Life's Big Questions. You'll have one of these flyers on your seat. And in just a moment, Pastor Glynn is going to be sharing the first message from this series. And we're excited to hear it. Before we do that though, we're going to take just a moment to say a great big thank you and to honour two people who for many years have been a massive part of our church and uh, their contribution to our church has been nothing short of breathtaking. Uh, but God is moving them on, calling them to a different city in a different part of the UK. And so we want to say thank you to them and honour them. And I'm going to invite them to the stage and they're not going to thank me for doing so. But would you just please welcome Laura and Sean De Silva. <laughs> on Ace's Church, stand to your feet and welcome these beautiful people.
Wonderful, you can take your seats. Laura and Sean, we just wanna say a, first of all, a great big thank you. Your contribution to our church has been nothing short of breathtaking, as yeah. I just said. You know, there's like evidence of your faithfulness to God and your enthusiasm and your commitment to the vision of this church. And we know that it's not just been the vision of the church, it's been your vision. And you've sown your very life into this place and we thank God for you all the time. We don't know where we'd be without you. We don't quite know what we're gonna do when you've gone, but that's a good sign because it means that you have been uh, both architects and engineers in the vision of our church. And we wanna say thank you. We know that God is calling you somewhere, otherwise we wouldn't let you go. If this was just a nice idea so you could chill, we'd be locking the doors and not letting you out. But we know that God is in it and we're excited for the next phase of your ministry and lives together. Uh, and so we wanna say thank you and also pray for you. We've got a little gift or a couple of gifts for you. Why don't you just, come on, give them one more round of applause. We're gonna pray for them in just a second. You know, back in um, around 2012, 2013, the government put out a green paper that talked about um, social welfare, social community work. And they talked about how the fact that governments, the best they can get is one to eight. For every one pound they spend on community investment, they get an eight pound return. But in that paper, they discussed how churches somehow are able to get a return of one to 18. For every one pound invested in the community, there's an 18 pound benefit. And, um, and just prior to COVID, I, I contacted Laura, who's been leading the Audacious Foundation, all the work that we're doing in the community, in the wider area. I, I said, listen, ha have we done an audit? And she said, yeah, we have. We had an independent company come in and did an audit on the Audacious Foundation. And apparently Audacious Church gets one to 21, a 21 pound return for one pound investment in terms of community impact. And Laura has made that possible, everybody. And um, so Laura, Sean, we wanna thank you so much for all that you've done. Sean, thank you for sharing your wife with the church. Thank you for sharing your wife with the community, with, with the people that she's been serving. And uh, we love you deeply. We know that as you go back to your home, you're going home, um, you know, that God will really bless you sort of, you know, in your home city and, uh, and, and back there in church. And, and we know that God's got good things in store for you because that's just the nature of God. You know, the Lord, the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, the labour's labour in vain. So you've been building this house, but the Lord's been building your house. Look, you fell in love, you got married, and may the Lord bless your triplets that have been born uh, in the near. Uh, that's a joke, that's a joke. Come on, reach out your hands towards Him, will you? Father, we wanna thank You for Sean, thank You for Laura, thank You for all the great things You have in store for them. Lord, for all of literally the hundreds, the thousands of hours that have been spent on leading the Audacious Foundation, Lord, for all of the seed, all the effort, all the fruit and everything that's taken place. Father, thank You that we are still yet to see the fulfilment <clears throat> of everything Laura and the team have set in process and in motion. But Lord, I pray that even as she steps on to a new city, into a new season of life, I pray that she would still feel the joy of the impact of everything that has been taking place over the last years, we pray. Bless Sean and Laura together. May their family be blessed. And in this new season, Lord, may You put Your hand upon them and may they know You're with them every moment of every day, we pray in Jesus' Name. And the whole church agreed and said, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Love you, Okay, Laura and Sean, make sure you come and see us as often as you can, okay? All right, guys, yeah. one last time. Let's give it up for Laura and Sean. Thank you so much. Well, like I said, Pastor Glenn is gonna kick off our new preaching series in just a moment. Before we do that though, I feel like there's someone in church you've been meaning to see for ages and you didn't get chance before the service. So what I'm gonna do is gonna get everyone to stand up. Do it now. Don't roll your eyes at me. I will roll them straight back. You have got 60 seconds on the clock to find someone in church that you've been meaning to see and just say, hi, how's it going? And in just a moment, we're gonna come back and hear the Word of the Lord.
all stand our feet for a moment one more time. Wow, if you think we stand up and sit down a lot, you should visit some other churches. <laughs> new series, new series starting today. Come on everybody, on your feet. Come on, stretch your legs. Let's get the endorphins running through our blood system. New series, Life's Big Questions. Today, I'm gonna be talking about why does bad stuff happen to good people? That's a happy topic, isn't it? Why, how come I get that topic? Anyway, that's, why does bad stuff happen to good people? We're gonna be looking at only Jesus, why only Jesus? Also in this series, we're gonna be looking at what happens to us when we die. You remember a few years ago, we actually did three or four nights on this on stage. We talked about heaven and hell. We broke that all down. Well, we're gonna do kind of condense all that into one service into just a few weeks time. So answering life's big questions. And uh, the, uh, the flyer's there. So why don't you bring somebody next week, somebody you can connect with and uh, maybe who are asking those questions. Also, I wanna give a shout out. Joining us right now, we have Cardiff. Welcome Cardiff. It's great to have you with us. We love you guys. We love everything that God is doing in Wales. And we know that God's not finished with Wales yet. He's only just started. And also we're welcoming Geneva, Switzerland online right now as well. Welcome Geneva. Good to have you with us. Bonjour, ça va? And uh, we're praying that God continues to bless you in this season. Let me take a moment to pray. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for all that You've got in store for us <clears throat> through this season. And Lord, even though the subjects are heavy, we wanna thank You that Your presence elevates us to a new place of understanding, life and liberty. Jesus, You said You've come to give us life and life to the full. So even though we look at a subject like bad stuff, we pray that the elevation of the life that comes in knowing You would be something that would permeate this message and this season of our lives, we pray in Jesus' Name. And God, I do pray one last prayer, a prayer that I've never prayed before, but I will pray today. Help United win today, I pray in Jesus' Name. Now, some of you cheered more about United than you did about Jesus, shame on you. And that's just typical United fans. Grab a seat, everybody. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. If you're feeling happy, don't read the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is known as the weeping prophet. You know, some people, you know, when, when they're sad, they wanna listen to blues and sad music. When I'm sad, I wanna listen to something buoyant. But in Jeremiah 29, 11, it's probably one of the most famous Bible passages in the world. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope, a hope and a future. And it's an amazing passage in Scripture. I know after the first service this morning, the nine o'clock service, I had a few people come and say, that is my life's verse. And a lot of us love the verse. But you know, when you break it down and you look at it, we realise that what we do love is the fact that God says He's got plans, check, great news, that He wants to prosper us. How many of us want God to prosper us? 40% of you in this place, Geneva and Cardiff, I'm sure everybody put their hands up there. Um, and the reality is this, but there's a point there where it says, His plan is not to harm us. And yet how many of you know, we live in a world where we've all suffered harm. I'm, I'm calling it today, bad stuff. We all know what it's like to experience things in our life that are not encouraging, things that are, that are bad. And so in one breath, we can declare that God is a good God, but how many of you know, it can be also difficult to experience or to declare that God's good when you're dealing with harm, when you're dealing with suffering, when you're dealing with struggle, when you're dealing with hardship. And I'm just conscious that today, some of you are in this place are, are walking through a challenging time. Uh, good news for you, if you're not walking through a challenging time, at some point you will walk through a challenging time. So either this is a word for now, or it's a word for the future. But either way, we all, myself included, need this word today. Why does bad stuff happen to good people? I think when we think about Easter weekend, we think about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Himself coming to die on the cross and what He modelled in that. Can I just say this, that last Sunday in church, 460 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ for the first time, 460. 420 in this room 
and then 40 with our other campuses combined. That's amazing, right? And we celebrate that. We celebrate Easter eggs and, and the high, one of my favourite moments in the musical last week. I watched it four times. I could watch it again. It was that good. You know, is when on stage, there's that moment, they're interacting, He's alive. And I'm like, yeah, He's alive. So great, we love that. And we love these celebration moments. And here we are seven days later, bad stuff happens to good people. Cheers. You could have uh, changed the, the preaching rotor or the theme and made it a little bit more friendly on the back of Easter. But it's a real question that we've all got. It's a question that humanity has been asking for thousands of years. The Psalmist David in Psalm 40, he says this, troubles without number surround me. And I guess maybe you know what that's like to have bad stuff all around you. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, he says in Jeremiah 15 verse 18, he says this, why is my pain unending? Why is my pain unending? And you know, we can arrive at kind of two points of conclusion when we think about God being good and yet harm and difficulty being so real, when we put those two together, we can end up with these two statements. Firstly, if God allows pain to continue because He can't stop it, then maybe He's good, but He's not all powerful. Seems like a, a worthy conclusion. Or the second statement could be something like this. If God can stop the pain, but won't, then maybe He's all powerful, but He's not good. What do we do with the fact that God promises to prosper us for there not to be harm come against us and yet we experience it often in our lives? Sigmund Freud, he said this, he said, religion is an illusion humans invent to satisfy their security needs. A benevolent, all-powerful God seems incongruent with natural disasters and human evil. I think when we look at that quote on screen, we realise that a lot of people arrive at that point of thinking. Well, God can't exist because of look at all the, the crises and look at all the challenges and situations in society. And I guess when bad stuff happens to good people, there are some people who run away from God. But I wanna suggest running away from God doesn't actually help you at all. Martin Luther King, he also said these words. He said, if there is no God, there is no divine law and no moral code. If nature is all we have, then violence is okay. This is how we got here. Violence works in nature. Why is it wrong in humankind? It's because there is a divine law. If God does not exist, we have nothing before us or behind us and everything is permissible. So let me say this as a Christian. As a Christian, suffering is a problem to us. But it is a greater problem to you if you are not a Christian. If you don't believe in God, then where is the hope and where is the answer in the midst of the trials that we face? Getting rid of God doesn't help us in the idea in the season of hardship and trouble because it's only with God that we get a sense of right and wrong. So what are we to do with this whole idea that bad stuff happens to good people? Well, bad stuff fits into three categories. It fits into the natural, it fits into accidental, and it fits into malicious. Three types of bad things. Accidental speaks for itself. It's an accident. Something happens and, and, and it's an accident. You phone the insurance company because you had an, had an accident. You get insurance because accidents exist. We know that. We know what it's like. If you've been in a car crash, you'll know accidents happen. In fact, if you give anything to your child to carry, you know accidents happen. Come on, somebody. You leave your dog at home too long, you know that accidents happen in the house. Accidents happen. My wife was in her second year of, of university, the University of New England in Australia, and she was in the car traveling with her two best friends. Her, her friend was driving the car. Sophie was in the passenger seat and Sophie's best mate was sitting on the back seat. And as they drove down a highway in country Australia, the sun was setting behind them and a farmer pulls up to an intersection onto the highway and turns out into the highway straight in front of Sophie's car. And my wife's car, she wasn't driving, my wife's car T-boned the farmer's car and Sophie's best friend on the back seat lost her life in an accident. 
N- none of us, none of us are, 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 are spared accidents. Bad stuff happens to good people. And in nature, we see accidents all the time, whether it be earthquakes. There was one just yesterday, was there, in New York. Uh, we see earthquakes around the world, one in Taiwan this week. We, we know of flooding and we know of tsunamis, uh, natural things. It's, it's bad stuff that happens because it's natural. And we also know this, friends, that is it appointed once, the Bible says, that we will all die. And so we know that we're born, we live, and we die. And all of us in our lives will experience the hardship, the torture, the suffering, the pain of, of being at the graveside of, of people who, who we love, who've, who've finished their earthly journey. We experience that. We have accidental, we have natural bad stuff, and we have malicious bad stuff. And malicious bad stuff is when other people do things that affect you. It's in a sense, often premeditated. It's definitely insidious, but whatever they do affects you in a bad way. And so one of the reasons why bad stuff happens to good people is because bad stuff fits into these three categories. And I guess one of the really big questions that we've got is this, is where does bad stuff come from? Did, Did God create bad? Did God create evil? Well, here's another tension point because the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 68, God, you are good and you do good. In other words, if you wanna know if anything is from God, you've gotta ask yourself, is that who God is? And so because God is only good and He can only do good and God can't do bad, God cannot do evil. The question is, where did evil come from? Where did bad stuff come from? Well, we have to go back to the beginning of time. The Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth and He created the galaxies, the Bible tells us. And then He created a perfect world. And in a perfect world, He put this, 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 this mysterious perfect man, ladies, and He hasn't existed since. And if the perfect man in a perfect world could mess everything up, then give your man a little bit of slack, not too much, just a little bit, as long as he's moral. A little bit of slack, just putting that out there in a world where everyone's upset about toxic masculinity and all those sorts of things. Just let your man be a man, you know. We judge other people according to their actions, but hope people will judge us according to our intentions. So let's show grace to each other. Put the perfect man and the perfect uh, woman in, in a perfect world. And the reason God did it was, was because he, he, he wanted to have the enjoyment of showing His love to someone and also be a recipient of someone's love. Was it a selfish act by God? I, I don't think so, certainly not, because selfishness is, is a sin and God wasn't selfish. But friends, you know what this is like. If you're a parent or if you're not a parent, you've got a dog or a cat or a budgerigar, you know what it's like to, to have a child and when you watch them opening a present or, or playing with their friends, uh, interacting in a school ground, you know what it's like, the pleasure you get as a parent watching your children. That's what God created humanity for, that He could get the joy of watching us live our lives. And He put Adam and Eve in the garden. He said, hey, I love you, but you've got a choice to love me because love, my friends, always has a choice. If love doesn't have a choice, then it's servitude, it's slavery. And so He created Adam and Eve with the ability to choose God or not choose God. And the Bible is very clear in the opening pages of the Bible that Adam and Eve chose to do their own thing. They chose to replace God and make themselves as God. This is the problem with social media today. Because what social media does, friends, is this, is social media kind of makes gods of ourselves. And what it does is it tends to isolate us. And we see society through the construct of our own lens, instead of realising that we're meant to be a part of a living, thriving community. That it's not about me and my ministry. 
You'll never hear me say those words, my ministry. It's not about me and my business. It's not about me and what I can do. It's about me and what we do together. It's community. And so what what the devil did is the devil took Adam and Eve out of that relational moment with God, made them think about themselves, and then they chose not to love God. And the reason we live with bad stuff is because of the point we made earlier, sometimes bad stuff happens to good people because other people have made decisions. And we actually live in the fruit and the effect of the decisions that Adam and Eve made all of those thousands of years ago. I got a theory that's not scriptural, but I really hope it's true. My hope is this, is when we get to heaven, there'll be a big long line to greet Jesus. And uh, it'll be like Disneyland, you know, while you're lining up to greet Jesus, the bands will be playing and you'll be hanging out with friends, who, who knows? But, but I reckon after you greet Jesus and you spend, I don't know, about a million years just in awe looking at Him going, wow, you're amazing. And you, and you spend, you know, a, a million years walking, walking on the streets of heaven, which the Bible says is like gold. Funny that, isn't it? The stuff we spend all our life earning, God's like, that's like bitumen to me. And I reckon the second line's gonna be to meet Adam. I just love the thought that we just get one free punch, (laughs) that it's a righteous anger. It's not in the Bible, but I like it. And so we live with the consequences, bad stuff because of decision that the first man and the first woman made, bad stuff happens. Listen, maybe you've been in a situation where you have heard a Christian person talk about when bad stuff happens in your life, that the bad stuff is judgment from God or punishment from God. But you just need to understand, friends, that in the Bible, we actually have two covenants. We've got the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant is pre-Jesus. The old covenant, obedience was commanded. And if you did not obey the commands, you received punishment, but then Jesus came. Because God, what He did is this, He saw that, that, that all have fallen short of the glory of God. None of us can come up to a standard. So He sent the perfect sacrifice, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago. We celebrated it last weekend. He came and died on a cross to pay the price so we would know that there's now a new covenant. And the new covenant is a covenant of love And this new covenant of love is surrounded and filled with grace. Do we still need to obey God? You bet you we do. But the reason bad stuff happens in your life, my friend, is not because you you, you did something wrong last week or any of that nonsense, old covenant nonsensical stuff. It's simply not true. The reason bad stuff happens in your world is because bad stuff happens in the world that is both natural, accidental, and malicious. It's not always your fault. Now, sometimes bad stuff happens because it is your fault. fault. It's not an attack of the devil. You just made a stupid decision. And sometimes you've got to stop blaming the devil and just go, I was an idiot. I shouldn't have done it. And move on. So what do we do? What do we do in the face of this bad stuff? How do we respond to bad stuff happening to good people? Let me read to you from the Bible today. Why don't you take another stand for a moment, just as we honour the Word of God. And I wanna read, um, gonna read nine verses. It's, it's pretty complicated. We'll break it down uh, for the next few, min- few, mo- few moments. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 12. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. God's keeping your inheritance in heaven for you. I love that. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, you may have to suffer grief, bad stuff in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you still believe in Him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls. Now, concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when He predicted the sufferings of the Messiah Jesus and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the Gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, and even the angels long to look into these things. Grab a seat, everybody. Three things I believe that Peter is trying to help us with in the midst of bad stuff and understanding the answer to this question. And the first thing that I believe Peter is asking us, encouraging us to do, is he's encouraging us to look back. Because here's what he says in verse seven. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Peter, the writer of these words, is likening your bad stuff, your suffering to a fire. In the same way we think about metal that goes into a furnace and it's molten and, and, and all the rubbish comes to the top, it's this whole idea that your suffering is like walking through a furnace. Now, when I read that, I was immediately reminded of three men in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And the Bible says that the king, King Nebuchadnezzar made an edict because he was all about himself because sin is always about your Self and about what you can get, do, achieve and, and acquire. And Nebuchadnezzar says, I'm building a statue and everyone should worship me, but worship the statue. And three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, refused to do so. And the king was incensed, so much so that he actually heated the furnace 10 times hotter than usual. I mean, this is what you call OTT. In a full kingdom with everything that he's got, he is incensed by just three people who don't agree with Him. And so we have the ultimate moment of cancel culture. Been around for millennia, thousands of years. The Bible says that when the soldiers came to throw Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego into the fire, when they opened the door to the furnace, it was so hot. I mean, you thought Spain last year was hot. It was so hot that the soldiers dropped down dead, but Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were thrown into the fire and King Nebuchadnezzar's going about his business and thinks to himself, I wonder how the furnace is going. So he comes back over to the fire, look at the book of Daniel, and it tells us that he looked and he scratched his head as he goes back to his wise men and says, how many do we throw in the fire? They said, three. He said, well, how is it that I can see four? And the fourth looks like the Son of God. Wow. Hold the thought. Peter says, your suffering, your bad times, your hardship is like walking through a furnace. Hang on a minute. Back in the furnace that I remember, there was another one in the fire. Three went in, four were there. The prophet Isaiah says this, the Lord says to your church, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. I love that. You're mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they'll not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. The flames will not, be, will not set you ablaze. Notice it says here, when you pass through the waters. Notice it says, when you walk through the fire. He doesn't say, I'm gonna stop you from walking through the fire. But He does promise to meet you in the fire. 
there's almost like that a sense where, where it's actually in, in the moments of hardship, difficulty and suffering, probably as you look back at your life, if you've been walking in relationship with the Lord for many years, you will probably in hindsight be able to say, the Lord was closer to me then than it feels like He is in the good times. Because there's this misnomer, friends, that causes us to think that in the bad times, God's not there, but in the good times, He obviously is because of the joy, the prosperity and all these things that come our way. But the Bible is very clear that when you go into the fire, He is there with you too. Have you been falsely accused? Yeah, you have. But Jesus did too. Because what Peter is saying this, he says, when you look back, Don't just look back at the origin of evil. Uh, Don't just look back at Adam and Eve. Don't just look back at at, at, at what happened in the garden. But when you look back, look at the cross. Because the cross of Jesus Christ, my friend, is all about us recognising and realising that Jesus did not stay afar off. He didn't say, I'm gonna be a God who watches you go through bad stuff. He says, no, I'm gonna be a God who's gonna come to earth and I'm gonna walk through the bad stuff too because the Bible says in Hebrews, we have a God who's able to sympathise. He's able to empathise. He's able to say, I know what it's like to go through the fire. I've been with it. I've been through the fire and I walk with you through the fire too. Bad stuff is not God saying He doesn't love you. Bad stuff is a reminder that we live in a broken, fallen world, but I'm gonna look back and see my Saviour on a cross who took death, sin, shame, born into poverty, died in disgrace. Everybody turned their back. Even the Father could not look upon that moment. You, friend, have a God who knows a God who understands, a God who empathises, and that is worth giving Him a shout of praise. Come on, let's do that for a moment. Come on, He knows, He knows, He knows. He cares, He's got you, He's with you. You're not alone. Dorothy Sayers, she says this. She says, for whatever reason God has chosen to make man as He is, limited and subject to sorrow and death, God had the honesty and courage to take His own medicine. Whatever game He is playing with His creation, He has kept His own rules and played fair. He can exact nothing from man and woman that He has not exacted from Himself. He has Himself gone through the whole of human experience from the trivial trivial irritations of family life and the cramping restrictions of hard work and lack of money to the worst horrors of pain and humiliation, defeat, despair and death. When Jesus was a man, He played the man. He was born in poverty, He died in disgrace and He thought it was well worth while. When you walk through it, He is absolutely there with you. Don't believe the lie of the devil who says God doesn't care, He doesn't love and He doesn't know. So Peter wants us to look back. The other thing he wants us to do in this passage, he wants to look forward because it says in verse three of 1 Peter chapter one, it says, in His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I love this, friends. What we're a part of is is living. It's a living hope. Now, if you would believe BBC News and Sky News and Fox News and ITV News, if you were to believe believe, uh, the newspapers, if you read them still or the online version, you would think that Christianity is in decline. But it absolutely and categorically is not. A few weeks ago, we talked about the global statistics. Did you know our, our church, we're a part of a movement of churches called the Assemblies of God. There's an Assemblies of God church planted on the planet every two minutes and every 52 seconds, somebody is actually getting, becoming a follower of Jesus in the Assemblies of God church movement. But in this country, just a week and a half ago, in one of the main newspapers, it led with this article, a Christian revival is now underway in Britain. Because they're starting to recognise that Christianity is not in decline, it's shifting. It just looks different. 
Did you ever, uh, maybe walk into this church once and go, this doesn't look like church? You walked up to the, the warehouse and go, uh, where, where, it doesn't look like church. And then you come in and it doesn't sound like church. It doesn't feel like church. I don't know what you're expecting. It's not shrinking, it's just changing. There are churches like ours all over the country. You know, I think when we came to Greater Manchester and we started Audacious Church 1,600 years ago, oh, 1,600 years ago. Gosh, I am that old. 16 years ago, there were, stop laughing side of stage. There were already somewhere in the region of 1,200 churches in Greater Manchester. 16 years later, it's close to 1,800 churches. What's in decline? I, I, I don't know what you're looking at because what we've got is a, a living hope. Yeah. And, and, and what Peter says here, he says, in his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Peter is talking to people who were suffering and they're about to experience more suffering, but he's saying, hey, everybody, even though you're suffering and there's more to come, you have a new hope that comes from the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We've got something to look forward to, friends. Because of His resurrection from the dead, we have the assurance of eternal life. Oh, I love that. This whole idea that we're here, but we're not quite there. We're sort of in between here and there, but one day we'll be there. Where's there? There is eternity with God. There is what we popularly call heaven. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, that at the end of time, Jesus will call quits on time. He'll say, right, enough is enough. The Bible says He will come back and He will take the church to be with Him in heaven forever. And what a glorious moment that will be, new heaven, New earth, new body. I wonder if you get to select. I don't wanna go to the gym, Lord, but I do want the guns, no problem. Could you make me three feet taller? That'd be amazing. The Bible says that in eternity, that we will rule and we will reign with God forever. Rule and reign over what? Rule and reign, the Bible says, over a new heaven and a new earth. Joint heirs, with Christ, with no more sorrow and no more mourning, no bad stuff, no opportunity for bad stuff, because in this broken and fallen world, we of our own volition chose to receive His love and love Him in return. That's good news. How horrible to be in a loveless relationship where you love your spouse, but your spouse does not love you. Love is a choice. And we have eternity to look forward to, this this living hope that comes in Jesus Christ. You know, my friends, in in the resurrection, in in the new heaven, new earth, the new body and all the Bible speaks about regarding that. Remember, in a few weeks, we're gonna look at what happens when you die. That in, that in that time, you're gonna get everything back, but it's not compensation for what you lost. It's not like the old PPI claims, you know, where you, you claim compensation, I lost these sorts of things. It's not that, it, it, it's a restoration of everything. Yeah. It's a restoration of everything that God intended for you when He created the perfect world. Yeah. You will get full restoration of all those things. So even though temporarily at times, Can we be honest? It sucks. It's horrible. Peter says, look forward to a living hope in Jesus Christ. And you know, many of you in this place, you've experienced the hardship of loved ones who've died. And and the encouraging thing for those of us who are Christians, for for loved ones who died who who are Christians, is this, is that the Bible says they're already taken into the presence of Jesus. We mourn for ourselves, not for them, because the Apostle Paul says in the Bible, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, which is greater by far. The Queen said in her Queen's speech, 
during the pandemic. She said words to this effect, we know we've loved because we have pain of loss. And it was a poignant time for her to say things like that. But we have the resurrection to look forward to. I'm gonna see my dad again. I'm gonna see my little brother who died in the womb when my mum was advanced in years in pregnancy. I'm gonna meet him in heaven. Gosh, we've got a lot to look forward to. You know, one of the reasons why back in the day, churches used to build cemeteries around the church, which is a bit of a PR crisis to be fair, isn't it? Talking about good news, you've got to walk through dead people to get into a building to hear about good news. But one of the things that it did achieve is that, is that all those years ago when they were doing that, it actually brought people face to face with the idea of mortality all the time. We live in a state of immortality in the sense we don't even think about life ever after. But Peter's saying, look forward to that. In Christ, friends, death is a joy. You could think about that for the next six months and still not even. In Christ, death is a joy. You gotta look back and look forward. And Peter also says that what we need to do is we need to, we need to look into these things. We need to look in. The Bible says in verse 12, even the angels long to look into these things. The angels who saw everything being created, the angels who saw the fall of man, the angels who saw the years of the patriarchs and the early church fathers and mothers, the angels who actually saw God step out of heaven Himself and become two cells in a woman's womb. He, they saw the Son of God be pushed through a birth canal, folks. They saw God learn how to walk and talk. They saw God die on the cross. They look into these things and they're still confused and they, they, they're still baffled. And they says that they even long to look into these things to truly understand it. But when you look into things, friends, you're gonna see that when Jesus went to His furnace, His suffering, His hardship, His bad things, when He went to the cross, the Bible says that Jesus, who for the joy set before Him, endured the cross. Do you know what the joy was, everybody? The joy was you. Because in heaven, He's got everything, but He hasn't yet got you. And so when we go through our hard times, when we go through our pains, we understand that Jesus came to show God wanted to step into our pain and ultimately remove it. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Here's what God does. He weighs up, your now, He looks at your present, He looks at your past, He puts them together and He weighs it up with your future and says, in the light of these momentary troubles and problems, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you an eternal hope an eternal future that you may get back more. You may receive everything that was lost when everything got broken. With your heads bowed, Father, I prayed across this auditorium, thank You for Your Word today. Thank You for being with us in the challenges of life and thank You for the gently and timely reminder that You've given to us this morning on these words. Lord, may we truly, as we look back and Look forward and as we look in, I pray we will truly experience you in our seasons. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Well, we just want to say thank you to Geneva and Cardiff for joining us in this service. We're going to hand back to the campus pastors now and they're going to finish off your service. Right here in Manchester, I want to pray one more time to close the service. I want to invite everybody in the room just to close their eyes and bow their heads. This prayer that we're going to pray is a, a regular prayer, something we do often and we, we will do through all our services today in all of our campuses and locations actually. And it's a prayer for anybody who is not a Christian, but actually you actually, um, you want to be a Christian. It's a prayer of connection between you and God. Now, I don't know what you thought being a Christian was on your way to church today. Maybe you thought it was someone that believed in God. And as I've said many times, of course they do. Um, maybe you thought being a Christian was someone that was, I don't know, tried their best or uh, went to church and I guess those things could also be true but actually a Christian is someone who believes not only that God is real but he's relevant and what he did for them they couldn't do for themselves and so they have to respond and so we don't just remember the cross at Easter last weekend we remember the cross every week and in every service all the people that you see on the platform and many of the people around the room have already come to this point of realization. They've already said yes to a relationship with God. They've already acknowledged that this is way more than religion. This is a relationship. And so I wanna invite you to be a part of this prayer. And in actual fact, we're all gonna pray this prayer together. But if you're in church this morning and you wanna be included in this prayer for the first time, then in a moment, I want you to raise your hand. And by doing that, you're saying, include me in the prayer. You don't have to have all your questions answered. You may still have questions and even doubts, but if you know in your heart that you're not a Christian, but you wanna be a Christian, you wanna know God, you wanna receive the love of God, then this prayer is for you. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, if you wanna be included in this prayer, I wanna invite you to raise your hand and I want you to do it right now. Put it up nice and high. Fantastic, I can see you and also you and you. Come on, who else joining these that have raised their hands so far in this service? Yeah, I can see you at the back, who else? Just a couple more seconds and then we're gonna pray. All right, you can put your hands down. Let's pray this prayer together. Church, would you join with these who have raised their hands by praying this prayer line by line? It goes like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you are real. I can see now that you love me. I know I'm not perfect and I've made some mistakes. So right now I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you took my place when you died on the cross, but then you rose from the dead. So I wanna stop living my way and invite you into my life. I wanna trust and follow you as my Lord and Saviour. From now on, my life is yours and I wanna live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Audacious Church, so many people raising their hands. We know that each hand represents a heart that is encountering God for the first time today we want to give you a bible if you raise your hand then we want to put this in your hand and we want to get you started on the first few steps on this journey called faith um, one of the team should have spotted you when when you raise your hand and so they'll come to you at the end of the service and give that to you and if you've got any questions then you can come and meet us in the connections lounge don't forget we said yes. that we'd meet you yeah if it's your first time don't forget to come and visit us in the connections lounge we'd really love to meet you and as well if you need prayer the prayer area Areas are going to remain open and someone will come and pray for you if you need us to pray for anything. All right, one last thing before we close the service and that is that tonight in our 5.30 service is kind of like the second part of this morning's message. Pastor Glynn's been helping us, teaching us about this whole idea of bad stuff and good people, but we want to pray for you. If you, you know, whether or not, you know, I don't know what's going on in your life, whether it's good or bad, but tonight our South Location pastors, Pastor Stuart and Julie are going to host uh, our service, we're going to have an extended time of praise and worship and we're also going to pray for all of you and if you want to respond to this morning's message, if you just feel like, you know what, I want to respond to God or I want someone to pray for me or like Pastor Glenn said, I want to invite God into the furnace, like into the fire, like that illustration with the, with the furnace, Jesus, the Son of God walking with them 
That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to ask God to be with us. So make sure you come back tonight at 5.30. Listen, thanks so much for being with us. Have a brilliant day and we'll see you tonight. See you tonight. Lead me.